all gain and losses even on the investments which are sold and realized full remain and the equity would remain in the equity would never be allowed to transfer to the pnl account similarly when the investment is impaired uh, the loss would also not be transferred from the equity to the pnl account would remain in the equity for all times to come so there is a permanent uh, residence i would say for the gain or loss uh, for non trading investments uh, so in you know in contrast to is 39 available for sale category the gain or loss will never be recycled to the pnl account it will remain in equity so when purchasing the investment or classifying the investment the entity has to make and consider this aspect that either they should classify this investment at fair value through pnl account or through statement of comprehensive income if you they choose for the statement of comprehensive income they need to uh, realize the fact that they would never be able to recycle the gain to the pnl account it will have to remain in the equity now that aspect uh, may create certain complexities in practice also because you know what will happen is that uh, you know for example you have got a non trading investment where all the gain and loss is recognized in the equity even in this investment is sold now what about the dividend you know because in our case uh, the dividend is allowed only from profits for the year so if that gain will never be part of the profit for the year how it can be uh, taken out as a dividend so there are certain uh, there may be certain issues as regards uh, the 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 legal aspects for dividend recognition and for um, for also it may also result in some tax issues because this gain or loss will never go to the pnl account but still be a gain or loss and whether or not that kind of capital gain how it will be taxed when it will not go to the pnl account also may be an issue so uh, as far as the standard is concerned a trading investment will be carried at fair value through pnl account and for non trading investment a choice and that choice is irrevocable it can never be changed now about the debt instruments all debt instruments would either be measured at amortized cost or would be measured at fair value through pnl account right now at the moment debt instruments uh, under is 39 can be categorized into four five categories it you can measure debt instruments uh, through as at fair value through pnl account held to maturity available for sale loans and receivable so uh, debt instruments gets classified into four five categories depending on the intention of the entity to hold those investments and depending on the nature of those instruments but under ifrs 9 debt instruments would either be classified at amortized cost or fair value now how you will make a choice between those categories is that is 39 say uh, ifrs 9 says that if a debt instrument meet two basic conditions it has to be it can be classified under the category at amortized cost so if a debt instrument uh, meets the two conditions it can be measured at amortized cost if not it should be measured at fair value through pnl account and what are those conditions first the first condition is that about the business model test and the second condition is regarding the nature of the asset now we we'll, we can talk about those conditions uh okay we'll we'll talk about those conditions also but in in brief the business model test the first condition is that the debt instruments must be held within the business model and the objective of the business model is to collect contractual cash flows now this term business model is is new to the accounting standards it has never been used in any of the accounting standard the business model but uh and therefore it's very very uh you know it may become sometimes very very complex to apply in practice but what the standard says that if an instrument is held within a business model 
And the objective of the business model is to collect all the contractual cash flows rather than selling the instrument. It meets the business model test, meaning in case of uh, loans granted and originated by banks, say, all loans are held. The business model of the bank is to collect the contractual cash flows from the loan. And therefore, the loans meets the business model test. Whereas, say, for uh, an investment bank where the uh, business model is to buy and sell debt instruments, uh, the, business the asset is not held to collect all the contractual cash flows but is held for buying and selling purposes, which means the asset does not meet the business model test. We'll uh, discuss this aspect in detail also. The second test is regarding the nature of the asset test. What is the nature of the asset? Whether the asset give rise, the cash flows of the, from the asset are interest and principal only, or there is some other leverage return embedded in the instrument, meaning the condition is that all the cash flows from the asset should be either uh, payment of interest or repayment of a principal. So if an asset is a plain loan instrument where the cash flows are either the principal repayment or the interest, and interest is defined as a consideration for time value of money plus any credit risk premium. So if the return from the instrument is either interest or repayment of principal, it tends to meet the nature of asset test, which is the second test for classification as uh, amortized cost. So if a debt instrument approaches, that if a debt instrument meets these two basic conditions, uh, it is allowed to be measured at amortized cost, otherwise it should be measured on a fair value basis. Now, looking at as I said, now let's take equity first and then we'll go to the debt instrument in a greater detail. So, as I said, in case of equity instrument, the distinction is between held for trading and non-trading. And for non-trading purposes, the only major part is that if you classify something on, as non-trading and choose to measure that on a fair value through statement of comprehensive income, you will never be allowed to recycle the gain or loss to, through the PL account. But as I said, all equity instruments need to be measured on a fair value basis. Now, under IS 39, there is an exception in case of unquoted equity instruments. So in case of unquoted equity instruments where the fair value cannot be reliably measured, uh, we are allowed to carry those unquoted equities on a cost basis where the fair value uh, reliable measure is not available. Now, apparently this exemption is not available under IFRS 9 because it says either uh, you classify the equity instruments on a fair value basis or a fair value through penal account or, or fair value through statement of comprehensive income, but all equity instruments need to be valued on a fair value basis. The standard have discussed the, this is, is issue about the unquoted equity instruments, and there are very limited, very, very limited circumstances where the standard allows uh, the unquoted equities to be carried at cost, or in other words, to use cost as a proxy for fair value. You know, you know there are various factors which are laid out in the standard, which if present, a cost cannot be considered as a proxy for a fair value. And what are those factors? Now, if you just uh, you know, go through the list, uh, a significant change in the performance of the investee, changes in the expectations, a significant change in the market for the investing company, a significant change in the global economy or economic environment, a significant change in the observable performance of comparable companies, internal matters such as frauds, litigations, etc evidence of the external transactions in the investee companies, such as issue of new equity or sale of equity between the two owners. Now, these factors are so, oh, so, so pervasive and so many that in practice, I think uh, there would be uh, virtually very, very limited scenarios where unquoted 
equity investments would be allowed to be carried on a cost basis. So this potentially will pose uh, a lot of challenge 